Lebanese designer Rabia Kirous founded his brand Maison Rabia Kirous, MRK, in 1999, embodying a couture savoir faire house. He's laid back and he loves to have a good time. On the night of his 25th anniversary party in Paris a couple of year, years ago, Rabia danced the night away with his closest friends, and he's a really good dancer, to be honest. And then August 4th, 2020 happened, and Rabia was one of many physically affected by Beirut's explosion that rocked Lebanon. He hasn't given many interviews since then. The famed designer suffered a brain hemorrhage, two clots, and 22 stitches that day. As a result, there was a limited ready-to-wear collection last September, and no haute couture collection in January as Rabia took a step back to physically and emotionally heal. But today, seven months after Beirut's explosion, Rabia has refocused MRK. He's taking it back to the basics, back to its roots, back to the house's iconic pieces, giving it new breath. His new collection, the Autumn Winter 2021 collection is filled with wraparound coats, capes, trench coats, pants, skirts, pieces that a woman can use for any moment. So enjoy this podcast episode with Rabia Caruz where he talks about how he's been spending the past few months and his refocus of MRK. I've always been interested in biographies and the stories of people's lives. In 10th grade, I read over 30 books of the Kennedy family, not out of obsession, but deep fascination of their commitment to public service. I read so many biographies that I've lost count, and I must say, I get this from my mother. She's always reading biographies. I'm Ali Porti, a fashion journalist and editor of Zayla Magazine. I invite you to sit in on some of my conversations with some pretty inspiring people from around the world on topics of fashion, entertainment, music, and entrepreneurship. Basically, these are conversations from the soulful side of life about topics that will hopefully inspire your life in some way. This is the soulful side of life. A few days after the Beirut explosion, uh, I was in Jamaize and I saw the damage to your showroom and my heart went out to you and your team. Um, How are you? Uh, You know, I know you got hurt uh, from the explosion. How have you just been doing and rebuilding since then? Uh, I am, I would say, I would start definitely by saying I'm fine. I, uh, I have the chance to be here and uh, to be able to, I mean, I'm here. So this is, I'm grateful to whoever saved me and, and helped me to be, to be right now, uh, be able to talk to you. Yeah. So, yeah. so definitely my first answer will be, I'm okay. okay. And then I will think more and I will say, I mean, it's horrible what's going on. I mean, we have to, we had to, to get out and to move forward despite all the, the our, our injuries, moral and physical. Yeah. Have you been able to start rebuilding your showroom in Beirut? Uh, the showroom is, uh, you know, I was renting the showroom and uh, our landlords are, uh, are keeping on uh, rebuilding, yes. Okay. We... Uh, we had the chance to have another place. I mean, uh, I would definitely uh, now think about my team who were just amazing because they, uh, I mean, I was uh, injured. So uh, I couldn't, uh, I wasn't able to work or to, I mean, I wasn't really uh, able to move. And my team uh, made the, I mean, fix the, not fix the place. They were, uh, they were able to, to, to save things from the house and uh, from the destroyed house and to, to put together all our stuff. 
and uh, we moved to another house next door and that the landlords grac graciously gave it to us. And uh, we were able to continue the activity. And this is uh, was the really the amazing will and the amazing energy of my team in Lebanon. This is uh, my, my beautiful memory from this, that despite everything that what would save Lebanon is the Lebanese. Yes. That's, that's... Amazing will. Yeah. <laughs> I... I mean, you saw, you saw Jemaisi two days later, and you saw how people were in the streets doing what what uh, what any government would do yeah. our job was done by the lebanese themselves they weren't waiting for any uh, any some, anybody else to do it so yeah. that's remarkable very remarkable with the buckets and the brooms and the cleaning yeah. the glass yeah because where i'm from in the us that the people wouldn't go out like that and help because the government no i think that was that's remarkable i mean no nowhere in the world you would see and it was done in such an organized civilized uh, and it's really i mean uh, you know Alison, i wasn't able to maybe uh, I'm, I'm not talking too much about what's happening I'm, I'm giving very very little interviews it's quite uh, very difficult for me still I'm definitely uh, physically. I'm 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 quite uh, good, but uh, I'm still very very uh, moved by everything that happened. Okay. It's not easy to get out from. Uh, I mean, I woke up so all the destruction around me, and uh, I still can't get away with it because it's really everything I built. Yeah. from my you know i was i am I'm, I'm the generation that built that kind of that part of the city by all means you know we were here in 95 and we started this part of the city and we were able to witness all the constructions and it's quite uh, disturbing that you you will see that we saw as well the destruction and yeah. uh, so today we need really, really, really a lot, a lot of will, a lot of energy to be able to come back and to build. Yes, yes. I hope that the Lebanese are able to do that. Um, the next question, you did m just mention this, um, but you've been really quiet. Uh, how have you been spending your post-August 4th time? I mean, I was forced anyway by uh, a, reco a long recovery. Yeah. I was I didn't have the choice. It wasn't like uh, a wise or whatever. It was a very medical uh imp I mean imposed uh I mean it I had to I had to uh rest. I didn't have the choice by doctors. I had to rest. I had to step back and uh and uh, as I told you I didn't have the choice to do to do different differently. So uh, I'm since maybe the beginning of the year, I'm uh, I'm working uh, slowly, slowly, coming, getting back to work, and uh, and anyway, I mean it's despite the explosion of Lebanon, I mean the world is exposed as well today by many for for this pandemic reasons, and uh, it's not an easy situation anywhere. So it is challenging to keep on. I have the chance to be in Paris, which is a civilized, calm, uh, calm city, yeah. and uh, this is where I'm spending. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I don't feel safe to go back to Lebanon now, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm really healing, recovering in Paris. Yeah, yeah. I, I can only imagine um, mm. if I were Lebanese, um, how I would all the burdens, the wounds that your own country causes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I wish you a good recovery in the city of lights. I hope you find light in these. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, it's interesting to be in a civilized uh, country where the human being is respected. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm really, blessed. I'm, I'm blessed to be here. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so um, I'm really looking forward to seeing your Autumn Winter 21 um, Ready to Wear collection. Uh, how have you felt that now is like the time to return to your craft because you didn't have a, a haute couture show in January? Um, you've been. You know, I uh, as I said, despite the despite the the explosion. I was thinking since last May to take different direction and uh, to to change many things in Maison Rebia Kelus. Uh, in uh, in more uh, to be more I mean to be more uh, how to say uh, towards what's going on in the world mm -hmm. I was thinking to to move uh, my work uh, on another level and uh, to get out from this fashion uh, hectic system mm -hmm. and to work more, I mean, to think less fashion and more clothes. And uh, to turn Maison Rabia Kairouz into a brand that where we love clothes, where we want to do a perfect wardrobe for the women we love. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I've been thinking about all that, about how for the last 20 years I've been designing and uh, really creating uh, different uh, cuts and interesting pieces. And those pieces, why to let them go? And why, why not to go back to our treasures, how I call them, mm -hmm. and to, to bring them back in a new, uh, with a new energy, with new fabrics, and even with uh, and going back to our fabrics, I mean, we have very specific fabrics that have been developed for us. Why to let them go? So it's really to go back to our roots, to our DNA, and to work with everything we love mm -hmm. in terms of form and in terms of uh, material. I mean, it's like in and out, in in terms of uh, cut and out in terms of fabric. So um, that's why, that's what I wanted since June to take Maison Rabia Kairouz to that level. Mm -hmm. And uh, then this explosion came. So I was anyway obliged to, to step back. And in this way, I, uh, my, my team were able to work the summer collection in that way. And then I was able to be more, uh, more present for the winter collection. And we worked it in this way, where we went really for the basics to do, to do exactly all the iconic pieces of Maison Rémy Kairouz with the iconic fabrics and to bring in the new, the new summer, the new winter collection with this new, uh, with this new energy. And in this way, our work will be, our wardrobe, I, I love to call it, it's not a collection, it's a wardrobe. The wardrobe is more is uh, is more uh, accessible as well. Even because when we uh, when we have uh, when we can think about uh, our collection with a step further, when we think about the collection, we can uh, we can we can even uh, we are ready and we are able now to propose the collection in more accessible prices because of all this thought that we made. Uh, I mean, we thought about the design and the fabrics. So uh, I wanted my collection to become really, um, and it's not in mainstream, but it is, uh, it's more accessible than before. Okay. That, well, that's a good thing. And you'll probably reach a, um... A, a different market uh, by having uh, affordable pieces. It's uh, it's it's the market. It's the ladies I used to love to wear to to dress, mm -hmm. but uh, they will be able to wear to wear more my my clothes than before to have more pieces, and of course, definitely I will uh, have more younger uh, young and uh, new clients that we want to achieve because. As a designer, my dream is to see all the people in the streets wearing my clothes. So I have to make them accessible. Of course. Yeah. Um, I will be publishing this when you do your show, uh, March 6th, I think it is, right? Um, Great. And um, can you give any hints uh, about the collection or is there anything that you can say now or, or should I come back to you after you revealed it? Because I'll be publishing this on the day of your. No, I trust you. I mean, 
uh, I told you, I mean, the idea was to really to go back to, I call the collection MRK as, a very, as our initials. And it's, uh, for me, it's a back to the house, back to the basic, uh, back to the roots and uh, back to our iconic pieces. So it's, uh, it's our iconic pieces uh, getting a new breath, a new life and yeah. coming back to life. It's yeah. a kind of, uh, it's not a remake. I don't know, I don't like to call this name. But it's more like uh, to um, uh, to uh, aff to affirm to uh, you know to when you have this, uh, when you have a word and try to say loudly what we believe in. Like I mean, I'm just translating from French, so um, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> to express firmly. I mean, it's to express to express firmly. Our, uh, our DNA. And uh, this is what Skull Action is about. It's like, this is Maison Rebia Kairouz. This is what we love to do. And these are our silhouettes. These are our pieces. And this is how we want to continue. I understand. OK. Um, you are uh, an official member of the, um, I don't know how, I don't speak French. The Chambre Syndicale. At the Chambre Syndicale, yes. Yes. And um, your collections have never been about the sequins and the sparkle that other Lebanese designers uh, have been known to create. Uh, how would you describe the Rabia Kairouz woman? Uh, Rabia Kairouz, a woman is a, is a strong woman who doesn't need any decor to, be, to become what she's not. <laughs> <laughs> She, she doesn't need the decor. It's like uh, uh, Susie Menkes once said that I'm an architect in the world full of decorators. Mm. So I love what she said. Oh. And this is exactly, I mean, for me, it's about the cut. It's about comfort. It's about craftsmen. Craft, it's about craft and the respect to the craft and not about just the decor to, to show something that is not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I like the essential. I mean, this, I'm, I like to have sense in my work and to make things essentials. And sometimes all this artifice, I mean, all this uh, glitters and uh, stuff that surrounds pieces are not real. So I'm not interested interested in doing them. Yeah. And it's amazing. I mean, it's still couture. It's it's still yeah. Because for me, couture is not about uh, about what is outside. It's about the way you do things. It's a it's a craft. It's a craft that I totally, totally, totally respect. Yeah, yeah. It's when you get to the essence of what haute couture is. It's not about yes. sparkle. No, couture is not a life. Couture is not a lifestyle. It's a craft. Yeah. And uh, I've been able for the last uh, 10 years in Paris to be able to use this craft and to give that emotion in my ready to wear pieces as well. It's not about like only the dresses that you have to wait three months to, to, to have them and to pay a fortune to have them and to wear them maybe once. For yeah. me, couture can be in a pair of pants, pair of, in a white shirt, in a, in a, in a skirt, in a, in a jacket. It's, uh, it's about the quality. It's about the craft. Uh, fashion is going through changes in this pandemic time. Where do you see fashion going when the world gets back to some sort of normalcy? Uh, you know, uh, fashion is, uh, is always a reflection to what's going on. Mm -hmm. So definitely there will be a reaction. It's like the after crisis. Uh, it's the after crisis thing. Mm -hmm. And and you you see it moving forward, like more creativity coming out of definitely. It. So this is what I, where I, you know we've been uh, for the last years. We've been maybe directed by uh, by a certain uh, mono mono thinking. Because this is what was what was working. This is the commercial aspect of it, and we were like uh, we were more guided and directed by the commercial and marketing side, which makes 
the the collection looks almost the same, not only in clothes, but in everything. Mm -hmm. But now that we had maybe those almost two years now of nothing, so when we will be back, we will have like no reference in terms of commercial and selling. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we and we will just express freely and beautifully spiritually our creation. So we won't need to have references, commercial references, because there there is not, there isn't, and uh, we need we need fun. We need to express ourselves, and we need individuality. Mm -hmm. and uh, we need that yeah we don't we don't need to look like each other mm -hmm. boring and i think it will come after world war one yes a lot yes of this is what happened this is what happened after every big crisis yeah. people came back in more energy and ener we, we, we will come back with energy we'll come back with maybe but to, today we will come back with an energy and very responsible one so, and we need to express our individuality. Mm -hmm. we, were able, we weren't able for the last one, almost two years now. I mean, it's one year of lockdown, but now it won't, we're not, uh, we're not getting out tomorrow. We need more, another more six months, maybe one year now mm -hmm. to get back to normal. So when we will get back to normal, we want to express our individuality. We've been, we've been shut out uh, for the last year. So, we need to express, and I think this will will uh, will reflect in the, in any design business. Yeah, yeah, in in, in any industry um, of fashion, definitely. Well, um, thank you so much for your time. Um, and I'm sorry that all that's happened to you, and I hope thank everything you. starts going thank you, for you. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this podcast episode and that you have found a soulful connection to the conversation. God bless you, and until the next episode, go bless somebody else.